So last video we learned how to create a cube using 3CS and add it to our scene. Also we learned how to modify the properties to rotate a little bit the cube and add other elements like the access helper from 3GS. Looking at this scene, it looks really stiff, it's not moving. What we're gonna do today is add some animations. We're gonna try to recreate this scene right here where the cube is rotating in two axes, giving this nice effect. This video is sponsored by Storyblock. Looking for a CMS solution that is great both for marketing teams and developers? Look no forward. Storyblock is the headless CMS solutions that you always wanted to have. See how easy it is to change content for your website with a real-time visual editor creating a delightful customer experience for your teams. Go from a content update to production in no time. Storyblock is easily integrable with multiple tech stacks, making your dev team's life easier. Go and try it for free at storyblock.com. So before we jump in, we actually start implementing the animations on our Tress yes scene, there is an important concept that I want to talk about, which is the animation loop and frames per second. So whenever you're doing animation, you need to render several snapshots. So in our scene right now, we have a snapshot created by your camera with the object inside. Then this is shown in the render or in the canvas element. Then, if we want to show a movement, we probably will need to set an interval and in the next iteration, show another scene with our object move it, and then capture a snapshot. We repeat that process as many times as we need, and that will create the movement. If you have, uh, if you have played video games, for example, or created content with cameras, you probably know already frames per second. So frames per second is how many snapshots or images can you fit in one second. The bigger this number is, your animation is going to run more smoothly because you have more animation data to play with. You have many frames and your animation will look more fluid whether when you have less frames per second, it's gonna look more clumsy, more like uh, a Pokemon game. Finish him. So remember, the highest this number is, the better the animation will be. The render loop of 3 yes runs at 60 frames per second, or if you're using a monitor that allows it in 120 hertz, or 120 frames per second. Now we are ready to start implemented in our uh, in our tutorial example. So I'm gonna move here to our experience where the cube is, okay? And first of all, we need to get the reference for the instance that was created by using this component. So how we can do that? By using template refs. So template refs are a really nice uh, feature of view and we're gonna use it for this exact case. So I'm gonna have box ref here. I'm gonna equal it to ref three mesh, okay? Here you can put whatever you want, um, but I'm gonna leave it as uh, without the type, okay? To make things a little bit easier. So now that we have the box ref, I'm gonna pass here a template ref to our component and gonna pass box ref. What I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna create a watch method that is gonna take uh, the value of the reference and if we have a value we are actually gonna console log it in the beginning to see what we have. So I'm gonna do this and then come back here. Uh, I will need to see the Dev tools, so I'm probably going to do like this. Okay, cool enough. Let's re render. So now we see that we have a proxy here in the console that has the instant mesh. And how we cannot be sure that is the one that we added into the code? Basically, if we check the geometry, it's exactly the same geometry that we created here. Okay, so it's a geometry uh, with these arguments 
And we can even see it better with the material. So the material is a mesh normal material just like here. So, so far so good. We already had the box. What happens if whenever we get the box, we update the position of it? We can use boxref.value and let's change the position in the y-axis to something even bigger than two. Let's put four, okay? And see what happened. So if I refresh you seeing that now the cube has gone up. We can use this for changing or animating our uh, box. So the idea will be, I'm gonna remove uh, this rotation here for the mesh that comes by default. And we're probably not gonna use the watch here. So before we were talking about frames per second. So how we can, uh, in certain intervals of time, request a rendering of our scene and also update the property for our box. We can use a function. So let's use function animate for this. So I'm going to create this basic function. Okay. And inside of it, we're going to use request animation frame. What this will do is we're going to call animate every time the refresh rate of the browser is triggered. That will mean 60 frames per second, or if your monitor is bigger than that, probably it's going to be 120. So by doing this and calling it a first time, this is how you do it in plain uh, 3GS. You basically create a function and here you will have a renderer. Okay, and you will do like render and pass the scene on the camera. But Tres yes is doing that for you. So for now, we're only going to request that the box rotates and we're gonna rotate the value with a minimal threshold. So let's save this, let's go here and see what happens. So rotation of undefined, because we need to make sure that whenever we start, the box ref has a value. If not, we return. With that, we have our box rotating. So that's a, a, a win. But what if I told you that Tres Yes already gives you a composable that has this rendered loop already inside? So instead of manually creating this animate function, what we can do is uh, remove this and use the use render loop Composer. So we're going to de uh, deconstruct on loop. Okay. And we are going to use, use render loop. This is going to be imported from the Tres core package. So once we have on loop, we can use it in the, in the following way. We can register a callback and inside of the callback, we can check if the box is already there. And if so, we change the rotations. In this case, let me change uh, the sitter rotation to have a more similar result. But we are having, to, like, we are using this value here to do so. The on loop returns several values, which is the delta and the elapsed. So the delta is basically the time between previous one and this one. So we can use the delta as the value to change the rotation. But we could also remove the plus sign here and use elapsed because it's the time that has been passed since the beginner on the loop. So if I save here and then I go to the browser, we can see that both axes are still rotating in a proper time. This is a better way of achieving the animation because the delta could change uh, if the frames per second drops. So the animation is going to be always more fluid if you use the delta and ellipse values that comes from the on loop callback. Now we can talk about one of the most asked questions regarding uh, Tres yes, is that, Alvaro, why we are getting the reference of the object and updating it when we have reactivity? So we're using view because the reactivity is so cool. Um, can we 
modify, like uh, here, for example, the position. We could say something like box position here, right? And this box position could be a, re a reacted value, like this. And whenever we are changing here, we can say box position value and change uh, the x value with uh, this function right here. So what will happen if we do that? If we go here, we're going to see that our object is not moving at all. Even if I put here like a plus equal and I say delta, you're going to notice that it's not moving at all. And that's because stress yes is not meant to have props that are reactive. Why? Why in the earth we will not like that? And it's because of performance. So why is it happening? It's because viewer reactivity is based on proxies. And proxies are not as performant as plain objects whenever you request change. So view is not really thought for this kind of approaches when you have a render loop that constantly updates an object. View is more designed to have a, a state and sometimes changing the UI depending on the state. So what we're doing here is actually hacking it. So if I show you this uh, benchmark that I took from 3GS uh, documentation, I think it um, resembles exactly what I mean. We have a plain object that the executions per second that this can have versus the proxy and the proxy setter, which are the, reactivity, uh, which are the base of the reactivity of U3. And we can see that the object completely outperform proxies even in uh, the double of performance. So if your scene is small, maybe you could uh, update the, the re reactive objects and work with it. But uh, we will recommend you to use the template ref to update your object because you say, hey, box ref dot value is reactive. For that, we can also do the following. We can use shallow ref. So shallow ref will maintain the uh, first level completely reactive, but the nested properties are not going to be reactive. So in that way, we can access the rotation and change the set of value without any performance issues. So the rule of thumb is avoid uh, using reactive objects to update the props here. Most of the components will not accept this because it's designed to use the template drive to be able to update the component because they are basically the three GS instances. And with that being said, we can finish our today's video about how to add animations to our objects in 3 GS by using template refs and the use render loop composable available on the core package. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe for more Trust Yes videos that are coming. If you have any questions on this implementation, I will leave the link on the description below with the branch for these changes on the animation. I would love to get all your feedback about the library and this content that I'm creating around it. So see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.